Welcome to DLab Electronics. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set bias on a tube stereo amplifier and also to ensure that that amplifier remains stable. All right, for this demonstration, we're going to be using a Dynaco ST70 amplifier. The boards have been rebuilt. It has new power supply capacitors, and now it's time to install the output tubes. So I have a new set of matched JJ EL34s. We're going to monitor the bias on a pair of these Hioki DT4256 meters. So I've just supplied power to the amplifier. What we're going to do is adjust a idle bias lower than what they are specifying. So Dynaco shows 1.56 volts. I'm just going to set both sides at 1.2 volts. So they're coming up. You can see this side's a little higher, so I'm going to have to tweak the bias on the left channel. So as I stated, I'm going to go for about 1.2 volts. We're going to allow them to warm up and stabilize. It looks like right now they're tracking pretty good. So you can see we already hit our 1.2 over here lagging slightly on this side. Alright, so now I have set the bias on my amplifier. Now, of course, the final bias will be set later, but for this demonstration I want to show you the technique of setting the bias and then monitoring it. The last thing that you want to do, guys, is set the bias on your amp, have it playing saying, yep, that's wonderful, shut it off after 5-10 minutes, and assume the job is complete you have to monitor these amplifiers. And that's why I have two meters set up so I can watch both channels at the same time. All right, I've had the amps on for about 10 minutes now. Look at that left channel. You can see my bias on the right channel is still close to that 1.2, but this channel is drifting up. So you may see that and say, well, I can just tweak the bias. Maybe it's just the tubes warming up. So let's go back to our 1.2 volts. Okay. So there it is. You may think, well, that's fine and dandy, but look, it's drifting up again. This happens quite often on tube amp repair. You set your bias, it looks good, it sounds good. And then after about an hour, those tubes start red plating because there's something not right. In this case, it is one of the JJ tubes. I've already identified it. That's going to continue to creep up and up and up. You can just set bias down all you want, and you're just going to be chasing your tail. So this is not a good situation. You should not allow your amplifier to run for very long, especially if you're not monitoring this voltage. But since I see this a lot, I wanted to share it with you. And you can see that number just keeps going up and up. And the funny thing is, you put this on a tube checker, it doesn't show up. So I'm going to kill it. I'm going to put in another set of JJ tubes on that channel. All right, I replaced the tubes on the left channel. Right channel still has original tubes, and I've readjusted our bias for approximately 1.2 volts again. Same deal. I'm going to watch that channel and see if there's any more drift because maybe it's not a tube. Maybe one of your capacitors are leaking DC and changing the bias to those output tubes. Even though these caps are new, that could happen. So they're looking pretty stable at this point. Once again, I'm going to wait about 10 minutes and we'll cut back. So there's still some slight drift on that set of tubes. But they're holding much more steady than the last set, by far. This is what you have to do. You have to sit down, sometimes for hours, cook these amps, and monitor that bias. You don't want it to go back to the customer and have those tubes go up in flames. Not good for the reputation.
All right, I've had the amp on for about a half hour now. And that voltage has settled back down to almost the 1.2 volts and this side is holding very steady. So I would say that we have a good set of JJEL34s installed in this amplifier now. So that's the point of the video. Don't slap in tubes and walk away. Take some time, monitor them, make sure that your amp is stable.